Folks, I have to confess something. I'm a developer that likes the mouse as much as possible. I think it's contributed to my imposter syndrome just a little bit. You see, whenever I see a ninja developer using a laptop without a mouse, and they're just navigating the entire UI using nothing but the keyboard, I nod my head and try to pay attention to what they're showing me, but inside I'm just amazed at their skill and a little jealous. Come on, fingers, why can't you be more like that? I happen to have a large collection of Logitech mouses, mouses, mice, and one Razer Orochi version 2, which is a brand new mouse that just came out, giving it a try. But Logitech didn't pay me for this. I'm using my own money to buy these for personal use. And look, I'm a simple guy. My mouse doesn't need to be a fancy gaming mouse. Most of the time I'm doing development work when I'm traveling or when I'm working at a coffee shop on my laptop, I like to have a mouse and I don't want to spend a ton of money too. I want it to be in the price range of zero to 80 bucks, zero free mouse. It also needs to work on a desk like this, shiny wood. I want it to work on glass. I want it to work on metal. I want it to work on tray tables and airplanes and in trains. And you get the picture. We're going to start out with this one right here, which is the Logitech MX. I've had a few of these and I've been using this mouse for the past five to six years. The mouse has a typical Logitech structure. It has a round, firm surface. It's got a chrome stripe in the middle and a scroll wheel. You're definitely in for an exquisite and sleek design if you care about that sort of thing. And if you're left-handed or right-handed, this is pretty symmetrical, so you can use it in either direction. There's also a nice rubber surface on both sides where you put your fingers, so it makes handling very convenient for users and kind of gives a sense of confidence when you're holding it. It also is nice and heavy when you put both batteries in there, which I actually like. It's over 300 grams. So the other thing that this mouse has is a, a unifying receiver. So there's the inside of it. You can see two slots for AA batteries and this little thing, which is not a Bluetooth receiver. Bluetooth receiver, that's inside the computer. It doesn't operate via Bluetooth which makes this mouse a little bit difficult to use with more modern devices that only have USB-C ports because this is a USB-A receiver. So I have to use an adapter for it. And I don't mind that because I really can't stand Bluetooth mice. They often don't work and they cut out and the signal gets disrupted. And I don't like that. I would prefer to use this with a dongle than lose the signal. And these unifying receivers that Logitech has work on multiple keyboards and other input devices. So literally you only need one receiver for several wireless input devices. And you can use the keyboard and the mouse in the office or on the go pretty easily without replugging. So that's the Logitech ecosystem. It works pretty well if you're into that. I only use the mouse myself, so that's all I really care about. Another fascinating feature of this mouse is its laser sensor. This happens to be a main deal for me as the mouse orients itself on dust and dirt and particles on whatever surface you place it on. And as I mentioned, it uses two AA batteries and actually comes with them in the box. I do have to change the batteries pretty frequently on this one every two months or so. But I found that lithium energizers work way longer than regular batteries for me. So those are the ones I'd recommend to use. Now, why did I buy this mouse five times at an average of once per year? Simple. I really love, love, love this mouse. It works really well on all surfaces I've tried it on, but for some reason, there comes a time when it just stops working. I've tried cleaning it, but it's no use. Not sure what the problem is, but that's my story. Oh, man. Moving on, because I loved the Anywhere MX so much, when the Anywhere MX2 was launched, I immediately thought my troubles were over and I bought it, but things didn't go quite as planned. I didn't do the research initially, so that's why I'm filling you in if you are curious about this. This mouse is very precise, even when you're on the go, a bumpy ride on a train, in a restaurant, on a chair. I've tried it in all those different occasions. It works on all surfaces, including glass and glossy surfaces as well. It's got a more modern edgy design than the first MX mouse. 
it's comfortable and it's portable. Like I said, it just seemed like an upgrade to me because of the version two when I got confused because it's not the same at all. Now, one benefit that this thing does have over the original MX is that it can connect with three different devices at the same time. And you can switch between them with just this little button down here, which is pretty cool. And it does have a rechargeable battery. More on that in a second. Everything sounds great, but this mouse was much lighter than the original, about three times lighter. And that just really felt weird to me. Without the heft that the original MX had, it felt like this mouse was gonna fly away. Probably all in my head though. That's not the biggest issue I had. My biggest issue with this mouse is that it didn't have batteries I can swap. When the mouse died, I'd have to recharge it. Whereas on the original, I would just swap the batteries and keep going. <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? Oh, no. Okay, it's fine. It happens, I guess. Sorry. Really sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Now, the Performance MX mouse. I said I'd get back to this big chunky guy. This was my first wireless mouse that I traveled with, and it was a beast. It was big and heavy, and it worked really well. But after a while, I just had to find something a little bit more manageable to work on the go. Now, for a while, this was one of the best mice out there with one of the most advanced tracking available at the time. Oh yeah, by the way, it's discontinued, but you can still buy it on Amazon for 249 bucks. What? I paid like $90 for it back then. I guess people love this mouse so much that even though it's discontinued, there's a high demand for it driving up the price. So it's a really nice mouse, but sadly the bulky size was a big turnoff for me while traveling. I ended up using it on my desktop at home for many years. Hey Kevin buddy, it's Joe. Yeah, we're killing it this month. Bitcoin is crushed. Do you mind? Where are you going? All right, moving on. When I started making video courses, I had to give up the clicks. Listen to that. And this one. Yeah, they were ridiculously annoying and ruined my recordings. So I started searching for the quietest mouse possible and found the Jellycomb. Yes, I was willing to sacrifice comfort and tracking accuracy just so that I can have a quiet mouse. Can't hear that, can ya? Or maybe you can, I don't know, but it's really quiet. So if you need stealth mouse mode, this is it. I don't know too many stealthy programmers though. So it's kind of a niche mouse. It's not bad though, for 10 bucks, this mouse features a high DPI movement resolution for precise tracking and the ability to work on almost all types of surfaces. It's completely symmetrical for left-handed people, right-handed people, and it's got three responsive buttons and a scroll wheel for quick navigation and super fast scrolling. It's a mouse, it costs 10 bucks. What can you ask for? My recommendation is use this only when you're recording videos or podcasts, if you do that kind of thing. Then when you're done recording, pack it away. I didn't know this at the time and I tried to use this as my daily driver for all sorts of work, even when I was coding. And I ended up going through three of these since they only lasted about two months each. Look out! <coughs> oh, oh, you okay? Oh, man. Oh, sorry about the mouse, man. Oh, man. And when I got fed up with that, I went on another quest to find a durable and quiet mouse. I went to my local micro center, which is a computer store, and clicked on all their displayed mice and found the Logitech M330. For the last eight months, this has been my daily driver for coding, video creation. I bought it specifically because it was quiet, it was small, so it could double for mobile use as well. And it has a single replaceable battery. And you know what? So far, so good. It only uses one battery, unlike the Anywhere MX. The battery lasts much, much longer. So far, after eight months, I'm still on the original battery that came with the mouse. So this mouse has something called built-in energy saver that automatically puts the mouse to sleep when it's not in use. This conserves the battery, making it last longer than other mice. It's also much quieter than the Anywhere MX. Listen to that. It's pretty good, right? It's also more ergonomic. It's got these curved parts where the rubber is. I did give up the top and side buttons though, but 
I didn't use those much anyway, so I'm okay with it. But left-handed folks won't like this since this is not reversible. It's only crafted for the right hand. It also has a really nice wireless connection. You can use it up to 33 feet with a strong, reliable 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver. Yeah, what's hey, up? Hey, huh? WTF, man. What? You want to say something to me? You want to fight? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, whatever, man. What'd you say to me? Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've also got two new mice, these two right here. So my mileage with these will be short, but I got these two with the same requirements in mind. The only difference with these two is that they're actually considered gaming mice. The Logitech G305 is marketed as the best selling gaming mouse, but it doesn't mean it's only for gamers, right? Programmers can use it too. Resolution is 12,000 DPI. USB report rate is one millisecond. Light speed is a high performance wireless technology that delivers a strong ultra low latency connection. Lasts up to 250 hours with a single AA battery. Okay, we'll try this out. Finally, the newest kit on the block is this one. It's the Razer Orochi version two, and it just came out. The specs here are a little bit better when it comes to the DPI. So instead of 12,000, this one has 18,000 DPI. Am I gonna notice that? I don't know, maybe, we'll see. But it's probably gonna be more useful for gamers than for the tasks that I do, which is coding. So this works on two modes. One is Bluetooth and one is just wireless. And if you're using this with Bluetooth, it can last 950 hours. Whoa. <laughs> 425 hours on Razer Hyperspeed Wireless, which is probably 2.4 gigahertz. I'm not quite sure. So about two times longer than this mouse. But it also requires two batteries, unlike this one, which requires one battery. Also, this mouse features a second generation Razer mechanical mouse switch with gold plated contact points. The gold switches are less prone to degrading and have a longer lifespan of up to 60 million clicks. So I'll see you in 10 years. Actually, I don't know how long 60 million clicks will last me. I'm guessing 10 years. Let's pop these open and try it out. <laughs> Oh, they give you a battery. Good job, Logitech. And to add to my Logitech cable collection of different adapters and cables, this thing. Feels good in the hand. I definitely should probably get the black version because this will get really dirty very quickly. That click is something I won't be able to use when I'm recording videos, but it's a really nice, satisfying click. So this might be a good mobile mouse only, not my desktop mouse. Nice scrolly wheel. That click is pretty loud. Might disturb somebody even in a coffee shop. All right, let's take a look at this one. Ah, okay. So they give you a battery here too, but they give you this Energizer Lithium battery that I was talking about earlier. So that's gonna make the mouse last longer. By the way, look at these two. Here they are side by side. The Orochi is smaller, more compact. They're very close to each other in shape though. And Logitech has actually some nice weight to it. After reading the description, it seemed like it was gonna be too light, but this one is super light. It's so light that I don't know if I feel comfortable using it. Whoa. <laughs> to put the battery and you gotta take the whole top off on this one. And it's got slots for a AAA or a AA battery, which is interesting. If you have a AAA around, you can use it. If you have a AA, you can use that. And I was wrong about requiring two batteries. It has two battery slots, but it only requires one battery. All right, so that's in there. It's really kind of uncomfortable to remove this thing. And I'd imagine if this mouse were to fall, then this thing might just pop off. Interesting, okay. So it's got a big click, like a big, big click, but the click resistance is pretty high, so you won't be accidentally clicking it. Like the Logitech, you might click that accidentally. I can see that happening. The scroll wheel is also a bit tighter on the Orochi. And here you can select between the 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth operation. Okay, let's pop this in. This is the Logitech adapter, and that should just work. It actually says your keyboard cannot be identified 
on my Mac. I'm gonna just close that, no need for that. Okay, feels kind of nice. Scrolling across the screen pretty nicely. I don't think I'll be able to tell the difference between these things on the first sitting. I might need to use it a little bit longer. Hopefully this will survive the drop test. Now let's try plugging in the Orochi, which again, I gotta prop open from down here to get this out. Kind of weird, not my favorite design. And I got the same message on my Mac about the keyboard not being detected properly. Ah, so this one you can actually turn off. I wonder if you have to turn it off after you use it. And if you don't, the battery will keep being used. I don't know. One other thing I wanna add here is that the Anywhere MX mice used to be super well designed. So not only does it come with this little switch right here, when you're done with it, you just close the switch to protect any dust in your backpack, for example, from getting into there, getting on the laser. That's really smart. They also gave you a pouch. So whenever I travel, I zip it up and there we go. That's how I travel, protects the mouse. I guess they don't do that nowadays, do they? Maybe these are not meant to be mobile. Maybe they're just meant to be desktop mice. So they don't give you a bag, all you get is the mouse. They do include the battery, thank you for that. Okay, wow, this one is snappy. So I did not change any settings on the mouse sensitivity or anything, and this one is super sensitive. I'm kind of liking it, because I can almost predict where the mouse is gonna be. It might be a little too fast, so I might need to slow it down in settings. It also slides across the table by itself very easily, unlike this one. That might be good or bad, depending on what you're using it for, and because it's so light, it might just fly off the table. Let me know in the comments also what computer mice you have, or you've used in the past, and what was your experience with it? Also, click the like button and subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.